Go. All right. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about firefighting tactics and how to fight a fire. Um, I've had a ton of odd jobs, but I think that I would probably be a fireman because you get to see the results of your job. You get there, is, you get there there's a house on fire, and you leave and there's not a fire anymore. That was a quote by Luke Perry, very basic, it basically describes what they do. Requirements, um, four engine companies, basically just the actual firefighting team is on those companies. Two rescues, ambulance, um, they just help anybody that's injured in the actual fire. Uh, one trunk comp truck company, they have ladders, the whole team, anything that uh, can actually help. And two VCs or battalion chiefs that actually uh, coordinate and tell everybody exactly what to do on the fire scene. And according to the NFPA, 100 firefighters die a year. It's a very dangerous job. That's why I'll show you guys exactly what they do and what, how they do it. And it's uh, obviously very dangerous. Uh, the plan for extinguishment when you go in. Uh, the first thing is they determine whether it's a defensive or an offensive attack. Uh, the fire department's general rule is if there's a lot, we're going to risk a lot. If there's a little, we're going to say, you know, we're going to risk little. So if there's two kids in the building and there's a, you know, a small fire, they're going to risk a lot to save two kids. If there's a huge fire and there's not a lot of chance for life and there's a cat inside the house, they're not going to risk all that much to save just a cat. Uh, the second thing to do is set a hose line. Usually they do 150 feet of uh, hose to start it off. Uh, they'll put it at the very front entrance of the door to go in and actually attack. And... Um, Third, they're going to connect the engine to the fire hydrant, provide water. Most of the uh, fire engines only have 500 gallons of water, uh, which isn't enough to put out a normal fire. So what they'll do is connect, and they'll get you know the actual uh, water from a municipal system. Uh, fourth, they're going to gather tools, including pike pole, flathead axe, uh, fan, irons. Irons just to pry open the doors, possibly. Flathead axe for anything that's inside. Pike poles to provide a uh, ground system. Uh, and with that fan, what they're going to do is they're going to provide proper ventilation through the entrance. Uh, normally they'll set the fan 10 feet away from the door and actually push air through that actual front door to provide all the smoke to get out of the building, otherwise you can't see anything. Right there, that's Henderson Fire Department's uh, fire engine. They actually have, and as you can see, there's tools. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain every tool because there's so many in there. Um, continued. You're going to don your PPE, which is for you know, personal protective equipment, which is an SCBA, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, it only has a bottle on the back. That provides your air just in case when you go in there you can't breathe inside the building. One breath actually will kill you because of all the uh, material inside. Uh, before you go in, you're going to fill the door for heat, uh, which provides, you know, it helps you from backdraft. And you're going to open it for entry, which you can kick in or you can, you know, open just if it's open. And then as soon as you go in, you're going to use a pipe pole. Uh, to check the floor for stabilization because the floor could collapse if there's a basement. Um, as soon as you make entry, you want to stay low because smoke rises, all the heat rises to the top as well. If you stay low, you don't feel as much heat and you kind of can see as well. It's kind of hard to see inside, but uh, it helps. And as soon as you get to inside, uh, you're going to see where the fire is. It could be uh, anyone inside the building, and once you see it, you're going to use proper technique to actually put it out. Uh, the one problem with putting a fire out that most firefighters don't realize is that uh, when you put out a fire with water, it also provides steam. A steam fills up in a room, it's going to get very, very hot. If, you, if you're sure most people have realized what steam does. It's very hot if you go into a building and you just put it out away. So you can do a fog or you can do a straight stream. Straight stream is just onto the fire right away, but that can also provide too much steam coming up and can make it way too hot inside the building. Or you can use a fog, which is just a general fog for your actual uh, for your hose. Um, after everything's done, after it's all over with, uh, overhaul, basically you're just making sure the fire's completely out, you check the entire building. You're going through still with your SCBA on because you can't, still can't breathe in there. Um, just, you're basically pulling down the roof, trying to figure out, you know, what started the fire, check for any fire marks, anything like that. And the F NFPA estimated that between 2007 and 2011, there were 366,600 home structure fires in the entire U.S. quite a bit. All right, so I have the actual equipment here that I'll show you. Uh, the actual helmet, basic helmet, this actually isn't in use with Henderson right now anymore. Uh, here's a face shield also. Usually they'll have a uh, built-in heads-up display that comes in. It's actually really high tech. And then your eye protection, I don't have the goggles on here. I took the goggles off actually. Uh, 
your actual jacket with cuffs, which I will show right here. You guys can feel this if you guys want to. It's very, very thick. Uh, it has a bunch of layers inside as well, and it has the cuffs right here. It uh, also has, you know, the name on the back. And thick structured gloves. These are the gloves that are really what we use when we go into a fire. They're real thick. They're definitely hard to put on as well. And then you have your pants. These don't have the overalls on them because I actually took them off. But normal pants, as you can see, very thick as well inside. They have multiple layers to protect from heat. And then last, um, I didn't bring the boots with me, but you can see the actual SCBA mask. This goes right over the top. And you have your pack on the back, and what you'll do is you'll bring that strap around, you plug in right to here, and it sounds just like Darth Vader. You literally breathe in, you breathe out, and it's, you know, it's actually a pretty cool thing. Um, this can fog up if you breathe, so that's what that does, that vents out all, all you know, basically your air in there. And uh, this will protect you most in the fire because you can't breathe all that contamination, and that's what actually ends up, uh, can kill most firefighters. Um, other than that, the one thing that um, most people don't realize about firefighters is that they don't die typically from the fire. Most of the stuff is overexertion. Um, things that normally for heart attack, for instance, is one. I think that kind of for 78 of the deaths last year was overexertion. If you're going into a fire and you're running a lot, your heart races, 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 and with all that heat, you don't have enough air, or something happens, then you can possibly die from a heart attack, which most firefighters actually end up dying from. And as so far, that's it. And that's actually me and my dad right there. Um, my first fire hose. <laughs> and I think it was three there. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you.